Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Targeted on a dating app, police say this man killed one man and critically hurt another, all because they're gay. How prosecutors say he used social media to commit a hateful crime. And the heat and humidity are returning to our area. We'll tell you how high the temperatures could climb for the weekend. But we do begin with breaking news now at noon. Labor Secretary Alex Acosta has resigned after criticism of how he handled a case against billionaire Jeffrey Epstein. President Trump made the announcement this morning with Acosta by his side at the White House. As you know, Acosta is under fire for giving a decade old plea deal to Epstein, who is now accused of sexually abusing dozens of underage girls in a sex trafficking ring. Acosta said today he's resigning, so the Epstein situation does not continue to be a distraction. He spoke about it just over an hour ago. I called the president this morning. I told him that I thought the right thing was to step aside. You know, cabinet positions are temporary trust. It would be selfish for me to stay in this position and continue talking about a case that's 12 years old rather than about the amazing economy we have right now. The White House says Acosta's deputy will become acting labor secretary. In other news, they were targeted because they're gay. That's how prosecutors describe a, a double shooting that left one man dead in Detroit over the weekend. They say the suspect found him in a dating app. Local Force Coco McAvoy joining us live now. Uh, I understand that, that suspect just appeared in court. Do they have anything to say? That's right, Evra. Demetrius Nelson just appeared in court. He appeared to be unfazed during his arraignment, despite the fact that he's facing various serious charges for these heinous crimes. Now, police say that he used the app Grinder to target two Detroit men. We know he targeted Brian Anderson and Malcolm Drake. Now, we know Brian Anderson was heavily involved in his church. That's the Steadfast Baptist Church in Detroit. I spoke over the phone with the pastor of the church who said, that he was a leader within that church group and they are very saddened by the loss of him and his viewing is actually taking place this afternoon. Now, I want to give you some more details about what police say happened. They say Nelson used the app Grinder to meet up with both of the victims. And when he did, they met up on I-94 near Connor. And at that time, police say that he ended up announcing a robbery and then he ended up shooting Brian Anderson in the back of the head and critically injuring Malcolm Drake. Now we are keeping t contact with police throughout this investigation and we'll have an update for you at five o'clock. Back to you. All right, Coco McAvoy reporting live for us this afternoon. Thank you for the update there. Former Michigan State President Luana Simon is back in a courtroom today. She's facing charges of lying to police about her knowledge of the complaints against Larry Nasser. This is the sixth day of Simon's preliminary hearing, which began back in February. And today, several people are expected to take the stand, including an MSU trustee and a Michigan State trooper assigned to the investigation. The MSP trooper explained what he was looking for when the investigation started. The aftermath of the Larry Nasser um, case, uh, we were investigating uh, in a nutshell who knew what and when, uh, if anything, at the university um, uh, related to Larry, Larry, Larry Nasser um, from 2014 on. So the hearing is still going on right now. We're going to see if the judge will rule whether Simon will stand trial. A Melvin Dill police sergeant now was sentenced today after pleading no contest to willful neglect of duty. Back on February 1st, Sergeant Matthew Furman and another police officer responded to a call of a drunk and disorderly person. And while there, Furman was helping the man down the stairs to recover when he made contact with him, causing him to fall. Furman was charged with willful neglect of duty, pleading no contest, and he was sentenced today. I read the pre-sentence investigation report. And uh, I'm prepared to adopt it. I will place Mr. Furman on, prob on probation for 12 months. And there you have it. Along with his probation, Furman is not allowed to leave the state. He also must serve 40 hours of community service and complete anger management counseling. Well, the temperatures are heating up all across Metro Detroit on this Friday. And with that, of course, comes humidity and chances for rain. Let's check in with Paul Gross. He's in for Brandon this afternoon with a look at what we can expect as we enter the weekend. Yeah, hey, Evrod. Uh, yeah, these clouds are kind of pesky right here, but uh, the temperatures are at least rather pleasant, and we're going to see a degradation of the cloud cover through the afternoon. 72 over in uh, Detroit, 65 in Howell, 70 in Port Huron, and 74 right now 
in Monroe. And here you see the cloud cover. But what I want you to notice, you notice as this loop starts, it's more of a kind of a flat, even white color on the clouds there. See that? But notice now you're starting to see some definition, like almost like a little cotton ball type of uh, shape there. That is the actual start of the process where we're getting mixing and we're going to start to break up the cloud cover as we move through the course of the afternoon. So a lot of clouds right now for many of us, but again, we should start to see more sunshine through the afternoon. And as long as we get to that sunshine, we should be near, if not a few degrees above 80 degrees. Now, as far as the weekend is concerned, as Everod just mentioned, the humidity comes back with a scattered storm tomorrow. Look at that upper 80s Sunday, a dry day, but the humidity comes back down. But then that humidity is comes roaring back for all of next week. So we'll talk about that and rapidly strengthening tropical storm Barry. All coming up in just a bit. Everod. All righty, Paul, we'll check in with you shortly. Protests today outside of the ICE offices in Detroit ahead of this weekend's planned immigration raids. On Sunday, Immigration and Customs Enforcement is expected to start raids in 10 cities. They're going to be targeting migrant families with court order removals. This morning, protesters spoke out against the raids and the treatment of migrants being held in detention camps. We're tired of, of kids in cages, of parents and kids dying in custody. We've had, what, seven deaths in ICE custody this year, and in the last 10 years before that, we had zero. So obviously something is different about this administration, and they need to answer for it. Another protest is planned for tonight. It's going to be outside of the Rosa Parks Federal Building, and it starts at 6 o'clock. A big auto collaboration announced this morning. Ford and Volkswagen are teaming up. The two automakers are investing in the autonomous vehicle company Argo AI at a value of more than $7 billion. Now, this will allow the companies to use the self-driving system in their vehicles. Ford and VW plan to develop self-driving commercial vans and pickups in select global markets. That would start in 2022. A busy Oakland County Road is shut down because of this. A big sinkhole there. This is on Middle Belt in between 12 and 13 Mile. It was actually shut down overnight in Farmington Hills. People can still get to some of the businesses and homes that are in the area, but right now it's unclear what caused this sinkhole or how long that road is going to be closed for. Police in Roseville say they are going to be stepping up patrols for lane closures on 696 over the weekend. Two lanes of the freeway will be shut down from I-75 to I-94, and that starts tonight at 9, and it's going to last until Monday at 6 in the morning. A tropical storm now is gaining strength as it barrels towards the Gulf Coast. We are tracking Barry for you this afternoon before it becomes a hurricane and makes landfall in Louisiana. Plus, an unusual discovery in the flowers at the Vermont State Capitol. Do you notice anything here? We'll tell you what police never expected to find. But first, disturbing new details revealed this morning about why singer R. Kelly is now facing federal charges.